Hi and welcome back. What I have here is a pair of dividers that I made several years ago. It was based on a photograph that I saw somewhere and I really liked the design and the proportions so I decided to make a pair. What interested me about this design was that uh, the shape of the arms allows you to open and close the dividers with one hand. Or at least that's the idea, but I didn't make this pair right and they're very difficult to use. This is exactly how they were made in the photograph, so that's how I made them. But I have seen others since then, and this curved section at the top is quite a bit larger. And that should make it a lot easier to open and close. So that's what I'm going to try today. I'll make a pair with the top section quite a bit larger and see how that works out. They probably won't look as nice as these ones, but they should function a lot better. And that's mainly what I'm concerned with here. I use these dividers quite a bit when I'm forging, just to take quick measurements, so I need something that's easy to use. The stock that I'm using today is just 3 8 round mild steel and it's about 10 inches long. I estimated that the curved part of the leg on the original was just about 3 inches long, so I'm going to jump up to 5 inches here just to see how that changes the proportion of the thing. This is a pretty simple form of dividers to make, so the forging is fairly straightforward. Uh, however, it is like making a pair of tongs, and you do need two pieces that are identical for the thing to look right. So you do have to take your time and do the measuring and just make sure that everything's right before you go along. To shape the arms, I'm going to be putting the curve in the bar first, and then I'm going to flatten out the section after it's curved. I find that a little bit easier than flattening it and then trying to curve it. And then once the curve section is done, I'm just going to taper the ends to a fine point. And now that I have the two halves forged out, I'm ready to put them together. The thing I like most about these dividers is that there's no complicated hinge joint. The friction comes from the two arms rubbing against each other, so all I need is a very simple rivet here at the top, just enough to keep the two arms under tension. And the amount of spring tension that you set up in the arms is what makes the dividers easier or harder to adjust. The problem I had with the uh, original set of dividers that I made was that the arms were so short and I left them so thick that there really wasn't any kind of spring in that curved section. So there was a tremendous amount of tension between the two arms and it really takes a lot of force to get them to move. So this should solve the problem because the longer arms are going to tend to be more flexible. But I can tell you right now that I don't like the look of these ones. That curved section is way too large, so I'm probably going to hit some middle ground between what I have here and what I used originally. And that'll give me the best balance of performance and, you know, the look that I'm after. The reason I did this video is because I get asked quite often what goes into, you know, designing the work that goes into these videos. How do I figure it all out? And a lot of it is just pretty basic. You just go out in the shop and you try something. You see how it looks. Uh, you make a decision based on that. You try something else and then down the line uh, I decide on a final product and that's usually what you get to see. But this is the uh, process that I use most often. Just trial and error. That one was too small. This one's way too big. You know, I'm going to hit something in the middle and that's probably uh, what I'm going to stay with. So the question you're probably asking yourself is, you know, I've mentioned several times that I know this is going to be way too big and I'm not going to like it, so why are you finishing it? Well, 
it's because you do learn something every time you put something together you know again I know this is too big but it is a finished product now what I can do is I can start cutting the ends of these curved bars down and sort of scaling my way back to find out what I do like I've got the shape of the dividers is totally done all I got to do is cut back the arms and uh, to get to a length that I feel is proportioned right and works right so I'm actually saving myself a lot of work by overshooting um, you know uh, the mark that I thought I wanted and uh, because sometimes you're wrong you get you 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 think you're overshooting a mark and it, you wind up that it's uh, it's perfect and you know you do like it after all so you know occasionally that works out for you but mainly this just gives me a way of playing around with a lot of different sizes of bars without having to totally reforge something from scratch so again that's you know part of the process as well I'm sort of thinking ahead well you know I can change this and alter it back until I see what I want and of course I'm going to be keeping track of what I'm cutting off so that I can estimate where I need to start on the next one that I want to make And of course the hinge joint gets done pretty much the same way you do everything else. You rivet it tight, uh, put it back in the fire to loosen it up, and then rivet and move the arms to sort of basically machine the two surfaces until they move freely. And here I'm setting the tension of the uh, dividers by twisting the arms slightly so they rub against each other as they cross. And again, this is a very light duty set of dividers that I use to make some very quick comparative measurements at the anvil. So I don't need a lot of tension because I don't need to hold that setting for any length of time. I'm just comparing one part of the work with another and then they're set aside. So that's the uh, behind the scenes video. I hope you like it. Um, next week I'll do the final version of this that's all cleaned up and ready to go in the toolbox. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you're interested in supporting this channel, the simplest way of course is to like, comment and subscribe. If you have questions and you want to contact me directly, you can do so by emailing me at either one of the addresses that I have listed here. It may take me a couple of days, but I will get back to you. Of course, financial support is always welcome. The only product that I produce is the information contained in these free videos. So if you like the work that I'm doing and the videos that I'm putting out and you can spare a couple of dollars a month, consider becoming a patron by clicking the orange Patreon logo at the bottom of the screen. Thank you and we'll see you next time.